right, guys, so I'm excited to finally be able to show you a little bit of a garden tour, and I got some blank spots to fill. We'll talk about that area later, because right now I'm up here in the pool garden area, so we're going to go down there and start. Look, I'm making sun tea, and then I got some cute turbids started there. What's what I'm growing in here? I got silver slicer cucumbers. Then I have cross country hybrid cucumbers. Delicious 51 cantaloupe. That one says delicious 51 too, but I kind of think um, maybe I mislabeled because I think I planted two different varieties of cantaloupe. I think one of them was Hale's Best, the other one was delicious 51. So now I won't be able to tell the cantaloupes apart and see which one I like better. Crenshaw melon. Japanese tiger melon, which is a new one from Baker Creek this year. I've never knew how to pronounce this. I've never even tried this melon yet. Juan Canary. I hope I'm saying it right. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Green honeydew, because there's an orange honeydew too. And probably other varieties I'm unaware of. Golden midget watermelon, which is supposed to have golden flesh uh, and golden skin, I do believe. At least golden skin for sure, I know. Jubilee Watermelon, Crimson Sweet Watermelon, Sugar Baby Watermelon, and Petite Yellow Watermelon. So not all of them have germinated yet, but they're coming, they're coming. So I'm planning on transplanting those down there because with all the rain we've had every time I sow most of my seeds, they wash away. Um, so I got yellow prolific straight knot neck squash here and I have it in this gallon pot because it is absolutely a squash bug magnet and squash and I go to war every year last year I couldn't grow squash and so it was a year without the battle but still then I have two different kinds of strawberries I'm not sure what the varieties are because I got them at Rural King and so one's Bonnie's and one's the Rural King one but they have two different color flowers one has white and then one has pink and those are the only two varieties of strawberries I have throughout my garden. Then here's some sweet mint I put in a pot. That was my first mint plant that I picked up and it's growing massive. I was hoping to, uh, it would help deter squash bugs, but it's not. So I'm probably going to plant that in the ground over there or something to help deter mice from the house because they like that laundry room there and then in the office where I store my chicken feed and cat feed. Borage is starting to bloom. Isn't it cute? And it's fuzzy. It's not really spiky. It doesn't hurt. And then pick a tea cosmos. Pollinators seem to love them. And I have some lavender. Uh, it's hard to tell what variety of lavender it is without seeing the blooms. Last year when I tried to put Bonnie's lavender in the ground, it ended up being Spanish lavender. Some more lavender there in my bigger terracotta pots and then my milk jug project i don't know why some things they're just so slow to grow i fertilized them again not too long ago hoping it would give them another boost to get going because i'm ready to transplant these bad boys out you know i really am and then down here i decided since it's getting out of control um, to go ahead and cover it with landscape fabric and I decided that was a good option because it's relatively inexpensive it lasts for several years and it's all movable so if I want to add more raised beds take some out whatever it's going to be easier to um, deal with it that way versus another way all right so I'm not sure what kind of squash I got growing I ran out of plant markers and said it doesn't matter <laughs> So I got two vining squash plants in here that are supposed to be more, oh look, it's a toad, more resistant to squash bugs than the varieties grown in that bed since it's closer, it's easier access. Then I have some Swiss chard growing into this bed, some rainbow chard. We got a couple marigolds planted on either side to help deter squash bugs and some dill, some volunteer dill that I just moved over there to help deter squash bugs. 
got some oregano, a couple of oregano plants here, some more lavender. One of them is a mud and steed lavender for sure. It's in that corner. And then lemon balm I planted back there. Then this is just German thyme. This is my thyme plant from last year, and it just, I don't know what's going on with it. That's a thyme I picked up this year. It was sad, and it was just given to me. So I took it home. <laughs> I have not done anything with the baby pools. I know I said I wanted to get rid of them, and... I know they're just growing weeds this year, but whatever. Well, at least they're growing more volunteer dill. <laughs> and look, this one's bolting. So I'll be having uh, dill seeds before long, too. Ivory tower. No, this is uh, large leaf basil. This is ivory towers basil. Those were also given to me, a whole flat of them. Then I have white Thomasol tomatoes, which are one of my favorite tomatoes. And I'm out of seeds, so I have to save seeds this year. I'm going to get some of those little mesh jewelry bags to put over my blooms so they don't cross pollinate so i know they are true uh the seeds are true you know what i'm saying this is a pink fang i grew this one a few years now and it's okay I'm trying to get it to trellis a little bit wrap it there we go this one definitely needs in there oh and there's a sucker let's get it big old sucker. Well, this plant seems to have two leaves on it. <laughs> That's a huge sucker right there. We're going to take that one off. Quick tip. Put this in a glass of water. It'll start growing roots. You guys yourself another plant. It came from right there in the armpit. And then um, you have blue cream berries. That's blueberries. And those are both cherry tomatoes. Oh, maybe I didn't want to break those suckers off then. Oh well. Um, another pink fang. This one is only one plant in that pot, so I'm going to let it grow a double, two or three stems off of this one plant. So the rest of the suckers I'm going to pop off. Okay, we're not doing a tomato pruning video, Mackenzie. Move on. <laughs> um, we could do that another time, though, for those that don't know how to do this. Um, this is Dr. Dr. Weichie's yellow tomato. And this one's a spoon cherry tomato. I remember that. Leave those suckers alone, me. <laughs> this one is a Dr. Weichie's, and I'm going to run two or three leaves off of this plant as well. And here's a black creme. It's the only plant I uh, in there. So I'm going to do the same with that one. Same with this one. And same with my Cherokee purple. I had two plants in here. Well, I have no Cherokee purples now. Those are spoon cherry tomatoes. You don't know what happened to the other ones. They just didn't make it. No Cherokee purples for me this year. So two more spoon cherry tomatoes. Um, can't remember what this one is but maybe if we take a look it's some sort of a paste tomato San Marzano that's what it is it's a San Marzano and I'm letting that one get a couple different leads on it too but some of these suckers just gotta go right now because they're getting big sorry guys I didn't mean it for turn into a pruning video Okay, and then this one's an early girl, and two or three vines, to, again, coming off of this one plant. All right. Well, I almost forgot about this bed. This bed over here is pretty boring right now. I mean, my cilantro is bolting, and, but I got parsley over there, so that's just a quick tour of that little L-shaped bed. This is um, a scarlet runner bean. I had some old seeds for 2018, and I decided, well, why not try to grow them up and around these hoops here and one seed germinated so I think I'm just gonna save seeds from that one I mean I might try I'll probably end up trying a pod raw but yeah I got some perpetual spinach here I tasted it earlier and I've never had it before to me it tasted fresh and grassy it didn't taste quite like spinach though but it's gonna be good for salads so that's good uh, perpetual spinach is actually a chard and it it does well in the heat so that's why I'm growing it I'm trying to 
spin them back to that in the chart the Swiss chart over there um, so they're not competing and they can you know grow pretty big and then yeah I'm checking for squash bugs too this is not a maintenance video Mackenzie stop all right let's go out to <laughs> the pasture plot okay up here I had like about six or eight plants in here cats knocked this pot over storms hit it now I'm down to two but this is Simpson elite lettuce so I'm happy to be having some summer greens going guys because this is just sad business all right and then here is a sweet potato I bought from the grocery store put it in some water and I'm still waiting on them slips to get a little bit bigger before I cut them and then I'll have to put them back into water and let them root so there's that my dwarf nasturtiums I think nasturtium blooms are cool check out those blooms how cool is that and my ice plant's got a bloom on it and my purple cow lily is going one out of two again Mackenzie this is not a house plant video either go down to the garden plot okay we're down here and I got some uh, some zinnias growing they're not as mature as the ones in my flower bed that I have to weed this afternoon I have to I have to I have to because it's gonna rain tomorrow and it's badly needing weeded these are my local cow peas that was given to me from a customer at Rural King um, he doesn't know the variety what the variety name is but they came over here from Germany in the 1850s and they've been uh, an heirloom in this area for quite some time now so that's really special to me that I would be have the pleasure of growing these this food you know I want to enjoy that too and be part of the tradition um, then I have some bush beans I can't remember the varieties off the top of my head and I got to fill in some spots too obviously that row stayed flooded when we had a bunch of rain too so I didn't yeah, yeah, nothing grew there. And then this is where everything keeps getting washed away from. Cucumbers, melons, corn. It just, it's no, it's no good, man. So I'm trying this super chili pepper plant this year. This is one I found at Rural King. Um, I read about it. It's supposed to be pretty comparable to a cayenne pepper, a good substitute for it. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I have a serrano pepper, nice little serrano pepper, pretty boring and basic, but hey, look what happened to all my seeds this year. Um, uh, yeah, that guy, he's not doing very good either. Um, this one is a jalapeno. I found the tag, we'll stick her back up. And yes, I gotta go back inside and get my elastic before I come down here. I'm gonna do garden chores after I get done with the video. <laughs> um, then we got some more jalapenos. They've got nice little fruits on them, it looks like. Yay! Um, it's beating my tomatoes. That's impressive. I think I bought a six pack of jalapenos. California Wonder Bell Pepper. It's coming back, but another California Wonder. If I would have known that it was in this bad of shape. I would have bought a second replacement plant because I went and bought some replacement plants today. Um, another California Wonder, Valencia Orange, which is getting replaced today with a Marconi pepper. Um, Valencia Orange, Better Bell, and Orange Bell. That's that, and then I got Cream Sausage, Roma, Celebrity, and Homestead tomatoes, and a Rutgers tomatoes all out here. And this is how my Florida weed me weave method is set up this year. It's my first year doing it. I don't know what I'm doing, but I found these bamboo stakes in the dark back corners of Rural King for $7.50, a 12-pack, and I could not pass that up. And then the string was $10 a roll. So I just set it up like that. Basically, I'm weaving around the plant and around the poles. Okay, I'll show you a little bit. So I just wrap it and then crisscross it one way and then do it the other way. Well, if I'm coming up this way, I'll go like this around the plants. 
and then coming back the other way. That way it figure eights around them. And that's how you do it. But these are all determinate tomatoes. Yeah, nothing impressive to show in this row because it stayed flooded as well. But I do have potatoes coming up and I've got like three or four varieties of potatoes and I don't, I see a couple sweet potato vines, but I got some replacements of those too, just because, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. And then I forgot to pick up corn seeds. Mm -hmm. So that's the progression of my garden thus far. Things are kicking off, doing great, and I got more to go. And um, I'll do some videos showing you guys some more stuff, like especially about the indeterminate tomatoes and, you know, things like that. So, hey guys, but thank you for stopping by. I love you and so does Jesus. God bless.